ladies, it's Raquel here. Welcome to Women Living Torah. You can do each of these 13 things I'm going to share with you in today's video in one minute or less. It literally takes a split second and yet it has a huge impact on retraining our mind to God's ways in growing in godliness as women. The first one minute habit is to pray as soon as a need is presented to you. Whether it's something I've seen online, if one of you comments and you say something and I say, I'm gonna pray for you, I pray right then and there so I don't forget. If one of my children falls and hurts themselves and they're really upset or they're sick, we pray right then and there because I want to make sure that when I'm telling someone that I'm praying for them, that I'm actually praying for them. And also this helps to keep Yahweh at the forefront of our minds throughout the day because needs come up throughout the day and it just keeps the Lord on my mind and retrains me to always seek him first when I have a need. And then also because I have so many opportunities to pray throughout the day, it allows me to teach my children and model for my children how to pray. So pray as soon as a need arises, really important and it only takes a minute. The second one minute habit you can do is to write a scripture in a place in your home that you pass by often. And as you pass by that place, read the scripture, just one scriptures. The Psalms are a great place to start because all of their scriptures for the most part are short and sweet. And just read it as you pass by and you will be surprised at how quickly you memorize that scripture just because you read it every time you go by it. So maybe you put it in your laundry room and every time you're switching over your washing to your drying, you can just read that scripture and you're gonna have the word of God begin to saturate your heart and your mind and affect the way you're living your life all the rest of the day outside of that one minute that you just took to read the scripture. The third minute habit you can do is to turn off notifications on your cell phone. They can be so distracting and such a time waste. I know that when I used to have notifications on my phone, I would hear a notification, I'd go over there and I would think I'm just going to handle that one thing and then 30 minutes later, an hour later, I'm still on my cell phone and thinking, oh my goodness, I just got sucked in again by this cell phone. So I've turned off notifications on my cell phone and it is so freeing to not be addicted to that little ding, to not have to rush over there and immediately do whatever my cell phone is telling me is of utmost urgency and importance that needs to be done. And I really think that by me not always rushing to my cell phone for things, I'm also teaching my children that that cell phone is not the most important thing in the house, that every time it dings, I have to run over there and do whatever it tells me I need to do. I am not controlled by my cell phone. And I think that's really important in this day and age, what we're modeling for our children, what they're seeing. And then also not being distracted, going to the cell phone one minute and then leaving, coming back a few minutes later, leaving, coming back a few minutes later. That's if we don't get sucked into it for long periods of time, but just constantly checking our cell phones. It's such a distraction. It keeps us from doing what we're doing and working hardly into the Lord. So get the cell phone notifications turned off, ladies. I'm telling you, you will feel so free. You will feel so good. Number four is to give thanks out loud as often as you think of a blessing. So if I'm seeing this little dude, his little head bobbling as I'm talking to you, then I'm thinking, Yahweh, thank you for my little boy Judah. I am so grateful for him. Or if I see my children, they're just sitting on the couch and they're playing nicely. I just thank you, Yahweh, for my children, that they're being peaceable in this moment. Or, you know, thank you, Yahweh, for my pillow. I can't tell you how many times when I'm brushing my teeth, I'm like, thank you, Yahweh, for this toothbrush. I love being able to brush my teeth. So just have a heart of gratitude and, and act on that gratitude. Don't just notice something and then let it, that moment pass by. Actually take a moment, just a minute, to verbalize to Yahweh, thank you for this blessing. I know this came from you. I don't take it for granted. I appreciate it. Thank you for this blessing. And by meditating on Yahweh's goodness to us throughout the day, it just sets us up for a great day. It fills us with joy, you know, because you're basically giving yourself good news all day long. I've been blessed with this. I've been blessed with this. I've been blessed with this. And it's hard to be grumpy or irritable or walking in the flesh when you're so full of joy because of all the blessings, because of all the good things that Yahweh is doing in your life. Habit number five is to write down three priorities for each day. Day. And the whole point of this one minute habit is to be busy about what Yahweh has placed in 
front of you to do, to not let the moments just pass by, to get distracted with the cell phone like I was talking about, but to be focused, to be intentional and deliberate about the business that Yahweh has in front of you to do, whether it's taking care of your children or your home, making up some new sourdough baked good to bless your family or bringing a meal to another family. Just write three priorities for the day. It could be cleaning the toilet. That is a blessing to your family. Just imagine if you didn't clean the toilet, ladies. That would definitely be a detriment to your family. So maybe that's your priority for the day. Just write down three so that you can be intentional about doing what Yahweh has placed in front of you to do. Habit number six is to tell your husband and your children that you love them. It only takes a second, but I know for my children especially, I'll just call their name, Abigail, I love you. And she just smiles and kind of squishes up and you can tell that that means something to her because it's just, it's randomly throughout the day. It's not like, you know, I have to tell her I love her before she goes to bed, but just as I look at her and I think it, I say it, Abigail, I love you so much. I'm thankful you're my daughter. And I think it's important that we verbalize that to our families, that we let them know that we do love them. We are loyal to their well-being. We're looking out for them. We're going to be there for them. It only takes a second, so it doesn't need to be left unsaid. Habit number seven is to put on your seat seat. I've got mine right here. I don't know if you can see it in the video. It only takes a second unless they're already tied into your clothing, and in which case you can just put your clothing on, and that also only takes a second. But putting on our seat seat is renewing that covenant with Yahweh that you are my God. I am your people. I'm going to walk in your ways. I'm going to be holy as you are holy. So teach me your ways. Teach me your commandments. You're my God. And that's what we're doing when we're putting on our ZZ. We're renewing that covenant with him. I have two videos, one showing you how I tie ZZ and another video with a Q&A talking all about ZZ that I'll put a link in the description box to. If you're curious what ZZ are, Numbers chapter 15 verses, what, 37 through 40? Is that correct? But put on your ZZ each day. Renew that covenant with Yahweh. Habit number eight for godly women is to immediately cast down any unbiblical, ungodly thoughts, any thoughts that are not in obedience to Christ, and reframe that thought with scripture. I know that I've sometimes had a negative thought that was not aligned with the word of God, and I've had to stop myself right then. Don't steal on it. Don't dwell on it. Don't grovel in that negative thinking or evil thinking, whatever it is immediately cast it down, submit it to the Lord, say, Yahweh, I thought this, but your word says this, and I am choosing to believe your word and to trust in you over what I'm feeling or thinking in this moment. It's training our brains to think on the things of Christ. It's reframing our mind to have the mind of Christ as new creations in him. I'm going to have it number nine is to apologize and repent as soon as an issue is made known to you, whether you are repenting before the Lord or you're apologizing towards someone else, your children, your husband, as soon as you're made aware of an issue, apologize and repent. And it requires us to push our pride down and to be humbled. And that's actually the harder part because actually apologizing only takes a minute, only takes a second. I know the other day, my husband and I were having a discussion on the nature of men, the nature of women, how that relates in marriage. And I was saying something, he said, yeah, when you said X, Y, and Z, that felt like a gut punch to me. And I was just like, oh my goodness, you know? And there's that little bit of tension, that little bit of uh, whatever it is that you feel whenever someone tells you that you've wronged them, you're kind of like, you know, you know, my pride, like almost immediately just kind of rose up where I just wanted to defend myself and defend the comment I, that I made. But, but thankfully, by the grace of God, I was able to instead respond with, you know, I'm sorry that I said that to you and that it came across that way. Um, and he forgave me and, and that was good. And so now that's not a rift that can grow in our relationship, cause divide and um, tension in our relationship. So praise God. It just takes a second of apologizing and repenting to save years of heartache and misery. So apologize and repent is our ninth one minute habit. One minute habit number 10 is to cease work on Shabbat. This really only takes a minute to do because as soon as it is Shabbat, I have a favorite saying and that is stop drop Shabbat. Imagine you've got a basket of laundry in your hands. The sun is just going down. You just, you just let it fall. You just let it fall everywhere. I don't do
do that in real life, but it's like the visual imagery that I love so much. Stop, drop, Shabbat. God ordained a Sabbath for us since Genesis chapter 2 verse 3 from the very beginning. We need that rest. And Yahweh not only wants to meet with us on those days and have us fellowshipping with other believers, encouraging one another unto love and good works like Hebrews chapter 10 says, I think verse 24. But there are also so many other benefits that come from keeping the Sabbath. There is so much growth that we can have in God's word and in fellowship with his people through keeping the Sabbath. So just cease the work, obey Yahweh, and you will be blessed through that. My baby was singing to me and talking to me, so I'm almost finished with this video, but how to lay him down so he can be happy, huh? That's right. right. We are on one minute habit number 11, and that is to send a text or to write a note to someone as soon as you think of them. It really only takes a second to make that person's day. What did Yeshua say is the greatest commandment? Love Yahweh your God, and the second is like unto it. Love your neighbor as yourself. This is a very easy way that we can love our neighbor as ourself. Send them a text, send them a note saying, I'm thinking about you. I'm grateful for our friendship. How are you doing today? You know, whatever. It really blesses the other person and it grows your friendship too. The 12th one minute habit of godly women is first thing in the morning, as soon as you wake up, give God praise. Let him know Thank you, Yahweh, for waking me up, for putting breath into me, for your new mercies that are renewed every morning. If you look outside and you see through your window the blue sky and the green trees, thank you, Yahweh, for this beautiful day. If your children jump on top of you and it's all dog pile and everyone's tickling each other, say out loud, Thank you, Yahweh, for these children. Thank you for their laughter. Thank you so much for the joy that you are putting into our home. And just start your day off giving Yahweh praise, blessing him, and just noticing and appreciating the many benefits, the many blessings that he's brought into our life. And like I mentioned earlier about giving things out loud as you come across blessings in your day, your children are hearing that. Your husband is hearing that. And that's modeling for them that habit of praising Yahweh first thing in the morning. It's also setting their day up for a day of joy and looking for Yahweh's blessings throughout the day. So start your day off praising Yahweh. And our final habit of godly women is that if you are struggling with something, perhaps an addiction, perhaps it's just a bad habit, then if you notice that you are doing that thing, bad habit, addiction, whatever it is, perhaps it's the tendency to speak about other people and gossip, Immediately when you notice that you are doing that thing, stop, submit it to Yahweh in prayer by saying, Yahweh, forgive me for doing this thing. Teach me and help me to do whatever it is that I should be doing. And ask Yahweh, specifically pray this, and it only takes a minute to, to do this whole little prayer, is specifically ask that Yahweh would help you to feel the negative effects of whatever, whatever that is. If it's gossiping, help me Yahweh to feel just how destructive my tongue is. Sear it into my brain. And I'm telling you, that is going to be a hard prayer to pray. I know for me, I used to be addicted to social media and I would just scroll and I'm just thinking, why in the world am I doing this? And I started to reframe my, my brain and I started to pray and say, Yahweh, you know, and I'm, and I'm over here scrolling. It's like while I'm scrolling, right? While I'm just mindlessly consuming all this content. Yahweh, I hate being addicted to my phone. My children are over there playing right now, but I'm just, I'm just doing this, this meaningless thing. And they're right over there, so beautiful, so cute, playing together peacefully. They just want me to come and be there with them, but I'm so distracted by this thing. Yahweh, help me to feel just how negative this habit is in my life. And ladies, Yahweh answered that prayer and I became so repulsed by the idea of Facebook. I couldn't be on it for anything for like, I don't know, two or three years after I prayed that prayer several times and Yahweh answered with giving me that just repulsive 
feeling toward Facebook. I just hated Facebook because I knew what it represented. It represented me being distracted, not being industrious in my home, not being a present mother, not being a wife available to her husband. It's not that there was anything crazy bad that happened, but Yahweh just helped me to feel just how bad this thing was for me by just making me absolutely repulsed to it. And that's how I actually broke my addiction to social media. Praise Yahweh. Whatever bad habit or addiction you may be dealing with, it is not too big for Yahweh. He can break that bondage and you can be free from it. So just surrender it to him as soon as you're aware of it. If you're talking negatively, complaining, let's say, gossiping, slandering, whatever it might be, immediately surrender that to Yahweh. Ask him to change you, to teach you, and to make you feel just how negatively this bad habit or addiction is affecting you. So there you have it. It only takes one minute to do each of these 13 things throughout your day and throughout your week, but they have a huge impact in growing and exercising us unto godliness, helping us to put on the mind of Christ, to have Yahweh at the forefront of our minds all throughout the day. I'd love to hear what habits you exercise yourself in as a godly woman. Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, I pray that Yahweh would bless you and keep you. I'll talk with you later. Goodbye.